Welcome to Case of the Week, Amoebic Liver Abscess. I'm Dr. Dan Koval from Radiologist HQ. Let's take a look at the case and then I'll review some key learning points at the end. So this patient started with a ultrasound of the abdomen and you can see that there's a large collection here in the left hepatic lobe. It's got irregular echogenic rim-like margins with all these heterogeneously hypochoic echoes internally. And there's also some irregular echogenic septations that at least partially extend across the collection. On this image, notice how there's some posterior acoustic enhancements, some increased through transmission. That gives us a clue that even though this looks solid, we're dealing with a collection. However, it can be difficult to differentiate hepatic abscess from tumor on ultrasound, particularly if the tumor is extremely necrotic, because then that tumor can also have posterior acoustic enhancement. And you can see that it's quite large, nearly 8 centimeters in size. Looking at the sagittal image, notice how the collection is immediately subcapsular here. It abuts the diaphragm, and it's close to the pleural pericardial space. On color Doppler imaging, there's an absence of internal perfusion. We do have some mild uh, peripheral hyperemia, which is common, and this is probably some color flash artifact due to motion being so close to the diaphragm. So the patient then had a CT scan of the abdomen with intravenous contrast, and we're looking at an early post-contrast phase known as a late hepatic arterial phase. So that means the aorta and the hepatic arteries are enhancing, as well as the portal veins, but not yet the hepatic veins. Those will enhance later. And there again is that large left hepatic abscess bulging against the anterior capsule. And we see another feature that's fairly specific for a hepatic abscess. That's the double target or double rim sign. So notice how there's this internal membranous rim of enhancement here within the abscess. And that's surrounded by this thin rim of hypodense parenchymal edema. Also, what else do you see? Well, there's this hyperdensity surrounding the abscess, geographic hyperdensity corresponding to inflammatory hyperemia. And that's also typical for hepatic abscess. As we move inferiorly, we can again see this hyperemia surrounding the liver abscess and this irregular septation starting to form, and we see those look a bit more confluent inferiorly there. And let's look at some landmarks. So here's the stomach here abutting the liver. There's the spleen, and then the left adrenal gland, right adrenal gland, posterior to the inferior vena cava and the caudate lobe. What is the name of this fissure here between the caudate lobe and the left hepatic lobe? Excellent, the fissure of the ligamentum venosum. <laughs> Now, if we look at a cone down view of that abscess, you can again get a great look at that double target sign there. We also see the peripheral hyperemia about the abscess. And even though there is some septations here inferiorly and we have some multiloculation, the bulk of the collection is unilocular, which is typical for an amoebic abscess. And now we're looking at a later phase image. This is the portal venous phase. And now we have, in addition to the portal veins enhancing, the hepatic veins are now enhancing. And see how the parenchyma is now homogeneous. We've lost that peripheral hyperemia about the abscess. It's normalized. And that's typical for these transient perfusional changes, also known as THAD, or transient hepatic attenuation difference. As we scroll inferiorly, you can still notice the irregular internal margins of this abscess, as well as the septations here traversing across. Now when we look at the third and final phase, this is a delayed phase image obtained about five minutes after the time of contrast. We no longer see that double target sign because the edematous hypodense rim has resolved and is now enhancing. We still have enhancement of that internal membranous abscess rim. And then there are the irregular septations, again, demarcated. But we still also don't have any internal enhancement here, which is typical for abscess. All right, let's look at some key points for amoebic liver abscess. And these are also included in the show notes for the episode. So this is caused by an entamoeba histolytica infection, which is endemic in Africa, Southeast Asia, and Central and South America. And it's also more common in males. It's about a 10 to 1 male to female ratio. And these patients often present with right upper quadrant pain. They may have fever and hepatomegaly and even cough if it's subdiaphragmatic in location. And it can be difficult to differentiate amoebic from a pyogenic or a bacterial abscess because both can have this layered wall appearance that I kept pointing out, the double target or the double rim sign. However, amoebic abscesses are more likely unilocular. When you have septations, it's only present in about a third, like in this case. But even then, you don't tend to have the typical cluster sign that you'll see with a multiloculated pyogenic abscess, meaning that you'll have a big collection that has all these tiny pockets instead of the collection like in this case, which just had a few ill-defined pockets. So the amoebic abscess is also more likely to be solitary, whereas pyogenic and fungal are more likely to be multiple. And it's important to differentiate because if you are suspecting an amoebic abscess, these can be treated medically with metronidazole. However, if the diagnosis is uncertain, like if there's suspicion, could there be a superimposed pyogenic infection? Or if there's failed response to this initial metronidazole therapy? Or like in this case, if it's a large abscess that's at risk for rupture, particularly into the pleural or pericardial space, 
that's where aspiration may be indicated. So let's look at the coronal three-phase series for this patient, again showing how large this abscess is. And concertedly, it's bulging against the capsule just below the pericardial space. So it's abutting the diaphragm at the cardiac margin. So if this was to rupture into the pericardial space, that would not be a great thing. And these amoebic abscesses are more likely to be subdiaphragmatic and rupture into the chest. They can also rupture into the peritoneum and cause amoebic peritonitis. So because of that, this patient did have percutaneous drainage. There's the catheter entering into the collection. We see some post-interventional gas here and antibodies to entamoeba histolytica were isolated. Thank you very much for watching Case of the Week, Amoebic Liver Abscess. You can catch these lectures each week by subscribing to our video podcast YouTube channel or by following on social media where it would be splendid if you shared with a friend or left a review. Until next time, radiology is life. 